Warning, the following footage contains lots of counter spells and sweepers. Viewer discretion is advised. I've got time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at Blue White Control as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the newly unbanned Teferi Time Raveler, now costs 4 mana as opposed to 3, starts out at 5 loyalty, and the passive ability has been modified slightly, now saying your opponents cannot cast spells during your turn, so a little bit weaker than what it was before. Then the plus 1 still lets us cast sorceries at instant speed, and the minus 3 still returns an artifact, creature or enchantment to its owner's hand and draws a card. So let's take a look at the entire deck. I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting out with a little bit of mana acceleration, where we have plenty of 2 mana ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. We also have Midnight Clock that can eventually refresh our hand at 3 mana and Key to the Archive to draft a card from the powerful 15 card spellbook, as well as a ramp for 2. Next up we have the spot removal category, where we've got Portable Hole at 1 mana, Source to Plowshare is definitely the best one, then Fateful Absence can also destroy a creature or planeswalker in return for a clue token, we've got Sanctify to blow up artifacts or enchantments and gain 3 life, Cast Out can be cycled or a 4 mana removal spell for any non-land permanent, and then even if we exile the opponent's commander and they put it back in the command zone, we can even bounce our own cast out with Teferi to then replay it and maybe exile something else, so there's a little bit of synergy there. And then Elspeth Conquers Death can also exile permanence with mana value 3 or greater and eventually gets back a planeswalker or creature from our graveyard, so sometimes it can be beneficial to let Teferi actually go to the graveyard, and we also have the synergy of bouncing or sagas to potentially replay them. Then the next category is counter spells, and there's no shortage of those, with Wash Away potentially a 1 mana counter for the opponent's commander. We've got Disdainful Stroke, Jory Disruption can also be played as a land, Memory Lapse, Negate, and Dovin's Veto for non creature spells. Tails End can also counter the opponent's commander, of course a classic counter spell. Sod Coming can be foretold to later cast for 2 mana, Absorb also gains 3 life, and then Commit is a flexible counter spell or bounce spell, and we can later cast Memory out of the graveyard thanks to Aftermath. Then the next category is card draw effects, where we have some cheap cantrips at 1 mana, including Brainstorm that plays well with our shuffle effects like our various fetch lines. We've got Consider, Opt, and search for Ascanta, which can eventually transform into the Sunken Ruin to provide a nice bit of card advantage. We've got Behold the Multiverse, that can be foretold. Memory Deluge can also be flashed back. We've got to Discover the Formula from Alchemy, also very powerful. Seagate Restoration can also be a land. And Sphinx's Revelation, a powerful X spell that also gains X life. Then the next category is Sweepers, where there's no shortage of white sweeper effects that destroy all creatures, starting out at 4 mana with a Day of Judgment. Shatter the Sky potentially makes the opponent draw a card as well. Wrath of God prevents regeneration. Cleansing Nova could also destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Doomscar can be foretold. Fumigate gains a little bit of life. Then Time Wipe can maybe pick up one of our creatures. Then River's Rebuke just bounces all opposing non-land permanents back to the opponent's hand. Realm Cloaked Giant destroys all non-giant creatures, and then gives us a 7-7 creature to play afterwards, and Vanquish the Horde becomes cheaper the more creatures are in play. 
Then the next category is Planeswalkers, where we have Gideon of the Trials at 3 mana, excellent in a control deck, as it can plus 1 to shut down an opposing creature, forcing the opponent to overextend into all our wide sweeper effects, which we can even cast at instant speed thanks to Teferi. Then a Narset shuts down opposing card draw while providing card advantage. Teferi can maybe untap some of our artifacts to provide extra mana. We've got Jace that can bounce creatures and draw cards. And then Teferi, Hero of the Monaria, can untap two lands to maybe keep up a counterspell after drawing. So incredibly powerful as well. And then the final category of cards is the Miscellaneous section, where we have all sorts of effects, like Authority of the Consul, so one-man enchantment making opposing creatures come into play tapped and gaining one life, so great against opposing haste creatures, which are otherwise good at attacking down our planeswalkers. We've got Sunset Revelry, can potentially make some 1-1 one -one tokens, gain 4, and potentially draw a card as well. Birth can find the basic planes, make an 0 for wall on the second chapter, and finally gains 2 life. We've got Sternheim Unleashed, which also greatly benefits from Teferi's plus one ability, letting us cast it at instant speed to make a whole bunch of angel tokens to start pressuring the opponent. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn, very powerful with all these planeswalkers. Shark Typhoon can be cycled at instant speed, so it plays well with the counter spells in the deck. Then we've got Torrential Gear Hulk, which we can also flash in to maybe replay a counter spell out of the graveyard. Dream Trawler, also great when the opponent is unable to cast any instant speed removal in our turn, so we can attack with it without any issues, and then maybe protect it with our various counter spells. Then Approach can also be an alternate win condition if we don't feel like attacking with creatures. Then Emiria Skull could be a land or make two 4 4 angel tokens. And finally, Alrun's Epiphany could also take an extra turn, maybe making some 1 1 bird tokens in the process. And then the mana base has a few utility lands, like the Cave of the Frost Dragon and the Hall of the Storm Giants as creature lands, then a few castles with Castle Ardenvale making 1-1 one -one tokens, and Castle Ventress potentially helping us scry 2 if we keep up our mana, and then another important one is Field of Ruin to answer opposing creature lands, which can otherwise be quite effective against our deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Jacob Hawken deck, and yeah, our hand's okay. So turn two, do I need to keep up memory lapse? Opponent's gonna probably play Jacob here. I think foretelling something is fine, and probably behold over Epiphany for now. The fairy can come down, maybe bounce Jacob to reset it. And uh, probably fine to play a tapped land, so I can either memory lapse or behold. Prevent our opponent from casting some big ramp artifact to get closer to the six mana to transform into Hawkins Insight. Opponent's looting main phase. Wanna fetch before casting Beholds, which scries. Otherwise, we shuffle those cards back. And if our opponent counters this, we can maybe resolve to fairy, so we'll see what happens. Swan Song to counter it, we get a bird. So our opponent could still have a counter for Teferi here. Not in any danger of Jacob transforming next turn. So it might be okay to not play Teferi yet. Maybe play Key so next turn I can Memory Lapse plus Teferi. Of course Shattered Sky also an option. But got to imagine that also gets dealt with somehow. Enjoy Disruption counters. We'll hit for two. All right, so next turn, it's do or die. Either Shatter or Teferi to deal with Jacob. Because once it transforms, we're going to be in trouble. I guess Teferi can still bounce the inside, but not before they cast a spell for free. So if something does get countered, I would rather have it be Shattered Sky, I guess. Since Teferi still answers the insight. Opponent does have Sabotage. 
Alright, so they get to transform. And we'll see what big spell they manage to cheat into play here. Assuming they have land 6 to transform it. Alright, they don't. So, Jacob stays in play for another turn. And now we could Teferi with Memory Lamps back up. Let me fetch first, just in case. Commit will memory lamps. I'll protect you. And now all those cards that got exiled will be lost. Even if they replay Jacob. Alright, so Crisis averted. Now we've got a Teferi in play that they have to deal with. Opponent commits our token, that's fine. Just gotta watch out that they don't memory here to refresh their hand. But we have counter spells available. So I could foretell Aaron's Epiphany to next turn casts. That still keeps up Dovin's Veto. Seems fine. And with one card in hand, I'm less concerned about Jacob potentially transforming. And then we've got Approach as a win condition. Okay, that's fine. And then now they go for maybe the memory. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play facing Toski, Bear of Secrets, which is indestructible and uncounterable. So one of the more annoying creatures to deal with, but we'd have a Teferi to bounce it, Birth makes a wall to block it, so we'll try. And then I feel like I'm gonna have to play this tapped. Turn 2 can maybe Birth, and then turn 3 Ascanta, turn 4 Key to the Archive. Opponent with a Signet and a Scorpion. Death Touch creatures quite synergistic with Toski. Alright, so what's next? Probably just uh, Search Raskanta since Toski is uncounterable. And then I guess your opponent gets to draw here off the Scorpion. Alright, opponent takes a different approach Mind Stone into Liberator. Could destroy my Search Raskanta. And the Realm Cloak Giant I should probably keep as an eventual sweeper. If I play Key, they could destroy that with a Liberator instead. So the play might be Teferi Bounce Sedge Scorpion, weirdly enough. And hope there's no big haste creature coming up. If I play Key, it's kind of rough if they destroy it. But I guess between Key and Toscanta we'll at least keep one powerful card in play. So maybe going for Key is still fine. Opponent's gonna blow it up. And then... Lightning Bolt, Day of Judgment. I guess Lightning Bolt is a more surgical answer to uh, Scorpion, but now without Key we cannot cast it, so... I'll take a Day of Judgment, which might be better than the Realm Cloaked as a Sweeper. Could also Ditch Absorb, since we might be tapping out in the foreseeable future. So 
the opponent gets to draw. Brainstorm can go to the graveyard. And then Teferi could bounce Toski now. I could time warp, but that doesn't accomplish a whole lot other than an extra search for a scant activation, which still, let's see, I guess five cards in graveyard. Yeah, we would still be one short of transforming. Our opponent can't cast an instant in response to save Toski, even if they had one. There's also Crawling Barons they could activate. It's gonna be Monuments into Toski. So this can give a creature plus two and trample, also good with Death Touch. So I'm surprised they targeted the Tenacious Pup. Since we can block that with a wall. Opponent draws. Memory Lamps can go to the graveyard. And now we can cast a Sweeper at instant speed, which is a little bit more effective. Or we can Time Warp, take an extra turn, take it from there. Yeah, I guess Time Warp is fine. Guardian Idol can go. And Oskanta can transform. Alright. Now Teferi could minus on Toski, we could keep him around. The monument does make Toski a little bit more threatening, but we can also just plus to then cast our Day of Judgment at instant speed. Could even play Miria's Call at instant speed to make some angel tokens to block. So this seems fine. Oof, opponent animates Crawling Barons. That's not gonna end well for them. So I'll just block Toski. And then Day of Judgment. And then we can still Ascanta. And then our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kethis, the Hidden Hand, Absan Legends. And what do we think of this hand? Could use an extra land or two, but Consider can help, and then Key. Powerful way to ramp into approach, so I'll try it. Could even find another approach with Key, which would be pretty funny. And then Wrath, good way to reset the board, Gideon to maybe make them overextend. Alright, so I think I'll consider main phase, in case I find a tapped land. So we will be able to play Narsets, at the very least. Although it doesn't help find additional lands, unless it's a Jewelry Disruption or one of the other Mythic Rare Sorceries. Ah, found land 4, so probably fine to Gideon plus on Shovel. Then next turn Teferi can maybe bounce Kethis. It's gonna be old Rothstein, hope they don't make a creature token. Gets a treasure instead. Still kind of liking bouncing something here, so how about we plus Gideon, then do I bounce Rothstein or do I bounce Shovel is a question. Because then we can set up next turn Teferi plusing to play Wrath at instant speed. Which sounds appealing. Probably want to bounce Rutstein. So they don't get the value from it. Shuffle already put its counter on Gideon, so it cannot place one onto Ferry. Uh, Thirst kicked does kill to Ferry and draws a card, unfortunately. So not what we wanted to see, would have much preferred them replaying a creature so we could uh, set up our Wrath. So now I probably let Shovel stay in play, play my key to the Archive and set up my approach plan. As opposed to keeping up some interaction here, which is also a possibility. But I think I like ramping. 
And then Time Warp, Lightning Bolt are probably the options. Let's go with Time Warp and get rid of Guardian Idol, perhaps. Might be a little greedy given that we're lacking lands. But assuming key stays in play, we'll have six mana. Which is quite a bit. So hoping to see them maybe double spell Kathas into Rutstein. It's gonna be a Spider Queen instead. Alright, so we could now Wrath at instant speed. Is that still the plan? Can also keep up counter spell. I could time warp, but I'm not really doing anything else, so. I think Wrath at instant speed is probably fine. Then hope they maybe draw with the Spider Queen before attacking, so we can try to uh, avoid them making more spiders. Good minions are loyal. And any creatures they play pre-combat, of course, is great for us. Uh, opponent moves to combat. Spider Queen gains some loyalty. So my power is for annihilation. And Gonti all happily counter. Ooh, a Veil of Summer. That's one of the best cards they can have against our deck. And yeah, Old Teferi would have prevented that from uh, happening, because it would have not let them cast the instant, but... The new Teferi, not quite as powerful in that way. Alright, so what's next? Can hit my land drop. Time Warp. Seems medium. Might want to just hard cast Shark Typhoon instead. The Fairy can plus. Yeah, we'll take it from there. Here goes nothing. And then time warp with a Shark Typhoon in play, a lot more appealing. Cast out can get rid of my Typhoon. Although it could potentially be bounced by Teferi. And then we also have our cast out back, so that would be ideal. We will slay our enemies. Although they can reduce Teferi's loyalty here, so we wouldn't necessarily be able to mine us right away. So let's fetch. Okay, so what's my plan? Don't really want to commit cast out. So what if I time warp? Can plus the fairy still play a Narset as well? Narset also good at finding approach. A second time. And then next turn I could bounce cast out, get my Typhoon back, take it from there. I think that's okay. I have practiced against many See if we can maybe find a sweeper. Ooh, Narset misses. It's painful. That's more like it. Conqueror's death, also quite good. So do we cash in Teferi to bounce cast outs, get my Typhoon back? Conqueror's Death could answer Spider Queen, make a 5-5 Shark. See what Narset finds first. Alrun's Epiphany, don't mind if I do. I wouldn't get the birds, but an extra turn seems powerful. And then maybe an extra turn with Sharks. Or do I want to keep the fairy around? I think we'll uh, cash into fairy. All right, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play, facing Goreclaw, so as long as we can wipe the board we should be okay. And Signet into an eventual Vanquish might do that, so I'll try it. And then some big Planeswalkers could still be scary if they stick around. But Deluge can help us find some counter spells. Also get to start out with our two creature lanes. And a once upon a time, no real reason for the opponent to cast it in my turn. Might as well take your draw step first. Finds a forest. And uh, turn one Lunar Elves. Okay, authority could be good for potential questing beasts and other haste creatures. So next turn, I could play Teferi and maybe plus, or I could Deluge. Plusing Teferi is quite appealing. And there's no fear of any haste creatures hitting him. And then now we can potentially Wrath at instant speed. Or just bounce whatever they ramp out. And our eventual game plan might involve Sternheim Unleashed to close out the game. Ah, opponent plays Goreclaw. They could still play something else, but they don't. Alrighty, so I can Vanquish once again at instant speed if I plus. So that seems good. And hope there's no make your team indestructible type shenanigans. Core Claw attacks. Could let the fairy take the hits. That's probably greedy since I can just bounce whatever they play second main. Druid of the Cowl, that's fine. And can keep plussing to Fairy. Maybe foretell this and play a memory deluge. Here we go. Could Field of Rune the Field of Rune while they're tapped out, but don't care too much about my creature lands, given that we have Sternheim Unleashed to end the game. Cavalier of Thorns resolves. Not a creature we necessarily want to bounce, because then they get the Enters the Battlefield trigger again. And in the graveyard some scary creatures, including Carnage Tyrant. Although Sweepers will still deal with it quite easily. Teferi takes one. And lots of goodies, including probably a time wipe and a key to the archive. Could also revelry to make some chum blockers. That key seems more powerful, especially with the Starnheim Unleashed waiting in the wings. So do I want to bounce Cavalier? Or we can just time wipe at instant speed. Let's try this. Or we can See what we find with key. And then keep up disruption or play tapped. I mean, Teferi can take six for all we care. If they play Goreclaw, I guess it would be seven, but we would still have a Teferi in play. A Lightning Bolt, not particularly useful. So I think we just get rid of the Lightning Bolt here. Play this tapped. The fairy takes six. And the Ronas, that one, a little bit more difficult to destroy for us. Counter spells, not bad. So, 
We can wipe the board before they get a chance to attack. So Ronas doesn't attack. So I can still Narset and time wipe. Finding Hero of Dominaria or Discover the Formula. Both are great. Um, the fairy might be preferred still. Could also bounce Cavalier of Thorns, but then they can just replay Gorklaw to enable Ronas, so that could get messy. So we'll pass. Toski's indestructible, so that one we cannot remove here. So lots of indestructible creatures. At least Ronas won't be able to attack. Even if it pumps Toski, still only 3 power. And Cavalier can put a Crater Hoof on top, not super threatening with authority in play. And we can always counter it. Cast out a nice answer to Toski. So this seems like a good turn to maybe set up our Starnheim Unleashed to make a whole bunch of tokens. Alrun's Epiphany, maybe take an extra turn first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I mean, certainly an option. Fight a fairy, untap two lands, then that's maybe not quite as effective. I guess we still get to cast out and counter spell. It's probably enough, actually. So I'm not going to foretell Epiphany, since I want to both cast out and potentially counterspell. I'll untap my basic so Field of Ruin doesn't mess us up in any way. Elder Gergroth is probably fine. Can just bounce it. And now cast out can deal with Ronos. Narsa down. You are a mighty warrior. I can see. And we should be able to do some powerful things here with Epiphany taking an extra turn and then Starnheim unleashed, making an army of angel tokens to end the game with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw facing Ram Carolus, so an aggressive red white tag. So my hand might be a little bit too slow for what could be an aggressive matchup. So let's take a free mulligan. Well, this hand has tons of sweepers, which may or may not be what we need. But I guess on the draw I'll try it. Sanctify gains life as well. And then I might want to scry towards more lands. And double white seems important. Fountain will keep. Might not necessarily be worth it to take two damage to foretell Epiphany. So we'll just play a tap land. Celestus we can sanctify. And play a tapped fountain. Opponent may be holding a lightning bolt. So we're hitting our land drops, which is what we need. Got plenty of creature interaction. So I don't think I want a Teferi bounce and lose my Teferi to a burn spell. So for now, let's Cold Steel for Telepiphany. And uh, let our opponents commit more creatures to the board.
And if they don't overextend, maybe Teferi can start plussing. Which will force the issue. Alright, opponent does have an answer for my artifacts. That's okay. Can still play Teferi and plus. And then we might lose the fairy to a combination of burn spells and haste creatures. Or I could play Time Raveler and plus. Then they wouldn't be able to burn end of turn. And then maybe Time Raveler soaks up a bit of damage. Plus I could even then Wrath at instant speed next turn. Ram Corollus joins the fun. Goes after Teferi. And if they want to bolt, they have to bolt now. It's going to be a red cap melee instead. We'll force them to sacrifice a land. Really should have seen that coming. So pretty painful removal spell. Teferi can untap counter spell, so that seems good. Just gotta keep the fairy alive and then reap the rewards with maybe an Alrun's Epiphany. Alrighty, so start by plussing. Keep up the pace. And it might be time to shatter the sky here. Still keep up Fateful Absence afterwards. And our opponent's pretty far behind, having sacrificed our lands. Tectonic Giants, totally fine. Probably no need to Fateful Absence that one. It is a giant, so it doesn't die to my cast out, funnily enough. We need to move quickly. So I can play Time Raveler, Bounce Giants. And then untap, keep up Fateful Absence for potential haste creatures. And our opponent's seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Mila, Crafty Companion, slash Luca, Wayward Bonder. My hand seems fine. Nice mix of creature interaction and interaction for non-creature spells. I'll fetch a planes. And we'll see if our opponent is more of a control deck or more of a creature deck. Can keep up negates. And then hope to hit our land drops. Do I want a Swords Mila? Can probably wait to Day of Judgment instead. Ravelry does not draw a card, but could gain four if I shock myself. Could also just play a Narset for now and get at least one activation. And find Consider as a cantrip. Next turn we can consider to try and find a land, Ravelry to maybe protect Narset, for the opponent to overextend into a Day of Judgment or Fumigate. Alright, Gideon is actually quite effective here. Planeswalker, that's also a creature that can pressure my stuff, although Source to Plowshare is a nice answer to it. Okay, so now what? I think it's still Revelry. And then I might want to keep up Swords instead. Could also develop my mana with Guardian Idol. So close call. I guess Narset at least mitigates the card draw from Mila, so that's nice. 
So yeah. Um, I guess we can consider and really hope for land. And then I do think I still revelry over idle. And then we can chump, exile Gideon. Prepare for battle. I surrender. Ooh, an Outlaw's Merriments. Yeah, that's also quite effective against our deck. Could eventually bounce it with Teferi and then try and counter it on the way down, but don't have the mana to set that up now. So the play might be Guardian Idol. I guess I would lose Narsad in the process. Keep up Negate and Counterspell. And try and buy time until we can bounce the Merriments. No one to can ping my token or Narset. We still have much to learn. And I could jump. I think I'll uh, save the token in case we can help protect the fairy with it. And Jace could also bounce stuff. So if I play Teferi, Bounce Merriment, I'm hoping to draw a blue source, or I guess just any untapped land. What's the alternative? Don't really have a great one. I guess Jace could draw, and then most likely die. Opponent could resolve something scary. I think we risk it for the biscuit. All right, so we get to keep up Negate now. And hope that can deal with the Merriments. Token can jump Mila to save Teferi. Sarkon I'll happily counter as well. Alrighty. So now I can Wrath at instant speed and still leave up Counterspell. Is that better than playing Jace? I think so. Could also approach at instant speed, get that going. Jace can help find the second copy. So if I Fumigate, I can still Counterspell. Welcoming Vampire is fine. Merriment is not. Dream Trawler is not bad either, although could expect it to be answered. Don't hate Jace. And then maybe just draw. Or we can go for the instant speed approach, untap, and then start digging towards a second copy. Yeah, it's a close call. Guess we'll go for instant speed approach here. And we can always Day of Judgments and change our game plan. Because I don't really want to play Dream Trawler if I'm eventually gonna Day of Judgments. Karn resolves. It's gonna plus. And get... Probably a selfless savior. I mean, they're both sort of annoying. Chandra's uncounterable. Although it doesn't really stop our approach plan, but could kill Jace. Savior saves the vampire. 
I'll give them the savior. And then still gonna go for approach over Day of Judgment, even though that would kill Vampire, prevent a card draw. Certainly an argument for just giving them Chandra, because they wouldn't be able to play it this turn, whereas Savior was kind of easy for them to play. But now they have to minus to get access to Chandra at least. And then search for Ascanta, also excellent for digging towards our approach. So yeah, I think we're kind of all in on just winning with approach now. There's no Field of Ruin to worry about to shuffle our deck. And our opponent's probably not going to deal 33 damage by the time we find it. So going to bottom pretty much anything. And then Ascanta put it in a graveyard, draw, chase, cry, draw, find approach, win the game. So they have to kill Jace with Chandra maybe, which is their entire turn. And that still leaves us in a decent spot. Opponent's gonna make a Karn Stroke to draw instead, to try and increase the pressure maybe. But can they pressure Jace? Hit them for three. Now we've got a fight on our hands. And a Platinum Angel. Alright, that can be pretty effective with a Selfless Savior to protect it. So that prevents our alternate win condition. Although we do have a Teferi to bounce Platinum Angel. So we'll find approach. And then I guess the plan is Day of Judgment. Opponent sacrifices Savior to save Platinum Angel. And then maybe Behold as well or activate Oscanta. And find another answer to the Angel which shouldn't be too difficult. Opponent moves to combats. And leaves the Angel to maybe play around Subtle Wreckage. Savior saves Vampire instead of Angel. So Angel down. Chase takes two. And then we can play Approach in our turn, also plays around any potential counter spells. Opponent replays our commander. And explodes. Sweet, Approach wins the game. So yeah, this blue-white control deck is quite powerful, I would say, especially against creature strategies. Opposing Planeswalkers could still be problematic, since that's one of the card types Teferi cannot bounce. So probably not a great decision to unban Teferi and have it available as a commander in Historic Brawl, but that's just my two cents. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.